chapter eighteen of a daughter of today by sarah jeanette duncan this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by bruce peary if john kendall had been an onlooker at the little episode of lady halifax's drawing-room in paris six months earlier it would have filled him with the purest amusement he would have added the circumstance to his conception of the type of young woman who enacted it and turned away without stopping to consider whether it flattered her or not his comprehension of human nature was too catholic very readily to permit him impressions either of wonder or contempt it would have been a matter of registration and a smile realizing this kendall was the more at a loss to explain to himself the feeling of irritation which the recollection of the scene persistently aroused in him in spite of a pronounced disposition of which he could not help being aware not to register it but to ignore it his memory refused to be a party to his intention and the tableau occurred to him with a persistence which he found distinctly disagreeable upon every social occasion which brought young ladies of beauty and middle-aged gentlemen of impressive eminence into conversational contact he saw the thing in imagination done again in the end it suggested itself to him as paintable the astonished drawing-room the graceful half-kneeling girl with the bent head the other dismayed and uncomprehending figure yielding a doubtful hand his discomfort indicated in the very lines of his waistcoat a fin de siècle tribute kendall named it he dismissed the idea as absurd and then reconsidered it as a means of disposing of the incident finally he knew it could be very effectually put away on canvas he assured himself again that he could not entertain the idea of painting it seriously and that this was because of the inevitable tendency which the subject would have toward caricature kendall had an indignant contempt for such a tendency and the liberty which men who used it took with their art he had never descended to the flouting of his own aims which it implied he threw himself into his pictures without reserve it was the best of him that he painted the strongest he could do and all he could do he was sincere enough to take it always seriously the possibility of caricature seemed to him to account admirably for his reluctance to paint a fin de siècle tribute it was a matter of conscience he found that the desire to paint it would not go however it took daily more complete possession of him and fought his scruples with a strong hand it was a fortnight after and he had not seen elfrida in the meantime when they were finally defeated by the argument that a sketch would show whether caricature were necessarily inherent or not he would make a sketch purely for his own satisfaction under the circumstances kendall realized perfectly that it could never be for exhibition and indeed he felt a singular shrinking from the idea that any one should see it finally he gave a whole day to the thing and made an admirable sketch after that kendall felt free to make the most of his opportunities of seeing elfrida his irritation with her had subsided her blunder had been settled to his satisfaction he had an obscure idea of having inflicted discipline upon her in giving the incident form and color upon canvas in arresting its grotesqueness and sounding its true motif with a pictorial tongue it was his conception of the girl that he punished and he let his fascinated speculation go out to her afterward at a redoubled rate she brought him sometimes to the verge of approval to the edge of liking and when he found that he could not take the further step he told himself impatiently that it was not a case for anything so ordinary as approval or anything so personal as liking it was a matter of observation enjoyment stimulus he availed himself of these abstractions with a candor that was the more open for not being complicated with any less hardy motive 
he had long ago decided that relations of sentiment with elfrida would require a temperament quite different from that of any man he knew it was entirely otherwise with janet cardiff and kendall smiled as he thought of the feminine variation the two girls illustrated he had a distinct recollection of one crisp october afternoon before he went to paris as they walked home together under the browning curling leaves and past the serpentine when he had found that the old charm of janet's gray eyes was changing to a new one he remembered the pleasure he had felt in dallying with the thought of making them lustrous one day with tenderness for himself it had paled since then there had been so many other things but still they were dear honest eyes and kendall never brought his reverie to a conclusion under any circumstances whatever End of chapter eighteen